Catwoman. Oh, wait, no, hold up. Wrong show. I meant The Flash, everybody. <laughs> the Flash. I almost forgot because I missed me some Ryan Wilder and some Batwoman. <laughs> it's The Flash and your boy Icon with some DCTV. Uh, episode four of The Flash, The Mask of the Red Death. So, we are going over The Flash now, and yeah, Ryan Wilder is definitely the MVP of this episode, and God, I miss Batwoman. I hope they bring Batwoman back eventually. But this particular episode starts, and they get, they did so much, like, they allowed her to use all the quotes, <laughs> like all the Batman quotes. Like, they did every single thing in their power to, you know, put her in the place of young Bruce Wayne, and like, there, are three, there are three famous Batman quotes that got used in this episode. The first one starts when she was talking to chill blade because he was about to fix the cosmic treadmill and then he asked her he was just like oh you know i need a power source and how can i power this thing up without a power source she said don't worry about that i'm gonna take care of it and then he started like quivering or having second thoughts and then she hit him with the first line and then she was just like oh all you criminals are the same a superstitious cowardly lie and i immediately started laughing <laughs> because if you watch the old adam west tv series like he would say that a lot about the villains a superstitious cowardly lot robin and then and then even if you watch batman beyond there was an episode of Batman Beyond where Terry and Bruce had gone to a play because it was a Batman play that it was a Broadway Batman play. Bruce's whole thing is he knows himself as being Batman, as being like the Dark Knight, striking fear into the hearts of criminals all over the place. Whereas like on Bat on Batman Beyond, the play was basically the Adam West TV show on Broadway and they was making him look like a clown. And then it was like a musical and everything. And he would be like a superstitious cowardly lie, you know, and everything. And then Bruce hated it. So that was funny. They let her say that. So anyway, so <laughs> she's about to go through with her plans for world domination or so we thought the two things let's just well the three things let's just get this out the way joe tried to buy a new house behind cecile's back and the two of them are still going at it they eventually decided that they were going to stay in central city because you know her power is something that can help the community and help people and their daughter sees her mommy as like you know this superhero person and he didn't want joe didn't want to ruin that allegra and chester they've come up with a reason now to prolong this thing even further and now we're at the point where chester wanted it and then she didn't and then now that she wants it, Chester is like, no. So like that whole thing is, good. and then also Chester, he's been texting somebody back and forth on the computer. The, it's like Wookiee 69 or something like that. The person he's on the, the person he's on the computer with chat with is Cisco. It's going to eventually, we're going to find out that it's eventually going to be Cisco. So anyway, so this particular episode was all about Batwoman, Ryan Wilder, and the Red Death. So the Red Death, she goes downtown because she's like, I got to get the power source. So Red Death, she goes downtown. She busts another criminal out of prison. And the criminal that they broke out, that she broke out of prison, I have no idea who this guy is like I know his name because they said his name and when they said his name I was like wait a minute I know that name and for the life of me I can't remember what season or what episode this dude played on and the, you know and then but when I think about it every time they kept saying his name I kept picturing somebody with gray hair and this guy doesn't have gray hair so I'm like I don't know I mean in the comment section below who was the villain that she broke out of prison that did the eye thing? And I, 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 I swear to God, I know his, this is, see, I'm great with faces and I'm bad with names. This is the one situation where I remember his name and I can't for the life of me place the face or the episode that he was in. So they stumped me on this one. But anyway, so whoever this dude is, she breaks him out of prison and then she beats up the Flash. And then that's when we get the second line because when the Flash was just like, oh, you know, because because this whole time. Barry thinks that, you know, Ryan Wilder, he thinks that, well, first of all, he still thinks it's a dude. Second of all, he thinks that it, she's the new Speed Force avatar. And he keeps saying to her, he's like, oh, the negative Speed Force has control of you. They're trying to, you know, poison your mind to think that you hate me, but you don't hate me. It's just the negative Speed Force. And then, you know, we can help you. We can help save you from the negative Speed Force. This whole thing is like, it's the negative Speed Force. And then she was just like, oh, I don't need your pitiful Speed Force. She's like, I create my own speed. And then Barry was just like, who are you? And then she hit, she hit him with the second line. And she was like, I am vengeance. I am the knight. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and then she was I'm like, oh, no. And then she was like, I am the Red Death. And if you're a fan of the Batman animated series, when you say, I am vengeance, I am the knight, you know where that comes from. So that was cool that she got to say that. So then her and the, and the metahuman that she broke out of prison, they beat up the Flash. 
chained him up and took him down to the basement. While he's in the basement, the Red Death, you know, approached Barry and said that, you know, I'm going to use you to power the cosmic treadmill. And then that's when Barry figured he was just like, wait a minute, your speed is artificial because only organic speed can power the cosmic treadmill. And then she was just like, yes. And then she took her helmet off and there was no one inside. But she was like, I'm more powerful than your stupid speed force. But she still needs him to power the machine. But then, you know, she's just like, I just need one more important thing to my plan. And then he was like, what's that? Your lightning rod, Barry. And then Ryan Wilder herself, because she can control her Red Death suit remotely. She had the suit in the warehouse talking to Barry. And she actually went to Barry and Iris's apartment and had her confrontation with Iris West because she needs Iris West. And this was cool. Because if you saw the crossover, the Armageddon crossover from last season, there was a nice scene with Iris and Ryan in the same scene having a conversation together at the first time. They were talking about how her and Sophie were married and how they were trying to have kids and all this other stuff. And it was very nice to see the two of them together. Like, I love the dynamic of seeing Ryan Wilder and Iris together. They were like besties. They were like best friends with everything. You know, so this was kind of like a glimpse of that. So Iris sees her. Now, mind you, on this particular Earth, this is the very first time that the two of them have ever met in life. Like, she's aware of... Of, you know who Iris is like Iris is aware of who Ryan Wilder is but they've never actually met so for Iris this is the first meeting but Ryan she's in now mind you this is Red Death Ryan she's in the house having a conversation with Iris and the whole time she's like going in her kitchen drinking her milk you know like making some tea putting her feet up on the couch and then Iris looking at her like bitch she's <laughs> she's like who are you and then, then here's where we got the story she ended up telling Iris that you know she got attacked by this red wave and then like this speedster beat her up and then she made her way to central city and then she's like i want to help you guys take down the red death oh bibolo that was his name bibolo but then my baby mama iris west she was like hold up bitch she was like first of all you know we ain't falling for that because she was like how did you get from gotham city to central city so quickly and then she was like oh the batmobile is really fast and then it was just like you know then she said that she just wants to help and then that's what iris was like no she said i understand you know how you must feel we'll want to get revenge it seems how you your family was killed by the Royal Flush Gang. And then Ryan was like, yeah, but I'll get over it. And then that's when Iris was like, gotcha, bitch. And then she pulled out the gun because she was like, first of all, Ryan Wilder's parents, you know, mother was murdered by the Wonderland Gang, not the Royal Flush Gang. And then that's when, you know, the jig was basically up. And then Ryan was just like, look, she said, I was just trying to talk to you and, you know, to calm you down before I drop the bomb on you. And then that's when she gives the reveal that she's actually from a different timeline and she's not actually the Ryan Wilder from this specific timeline. Iris still got the gat to her face. And then she was just like, you know, tell me your story. And basically, in her timeline in Ryan in in Red Death's timeline there was never a Bruce Wayne the Waynes actually adopted this poor black child and the Waynes took her in and then they you know when she was eight years old they got murdered in an alley and then she became you know Batman and she was or Batwoman and she was on the path to you know being Batwoman and she joined the Justice League and she was ridden the city of criminals but then she was just like the revolving door of Arkham started to get to her after a while and she needed another way she needed to find another way so she said that she actually started looking into copying her enemy's powers that's how she was able to duplicate the weapons for all the rogues because she was given she was able to create villain technology that could replicate their powers but then just like just like true bruce wayne a la batman form she then started copying the powers and the abilities of her allies and her teammates and that's a big no-no that's how we got doom so <laughs> so then when she copied the powers of the flash she ended up getting the speed and then once she got the speed she got to a point where she started arresting criminals and putting criminals in jail before they even had a chance to you know to even commit a crime and then that's because that goes back to the whole thing when she said earlier in the episode where she was like oh because iris even showed her she was like oh these are the reformed criminals that are on our side and then ryan was like there's no such thing as reformed criminals because her whole thing is she's trying to stop them from committing crimes before they even do it because she's trying to stop the revolving door of arkham now my whole thing is stopping them before they commit a crime bullshit because she said that bear well she did she did put them in jail but i like to think at some point she was actually murdering these criminals because she said that after a while when the flash in her timeline found Found out that she was you know putting criminals in jail before they even committed a crime barry broke those criminals those metahumans out of prison and they teamed up together to take you know red death down so then ryan said she was just like listen i need your help because maybe you can help me talk down barry because you know you can get through to him and then that's when iris was like well why don't you just ask you know the iris west from your timeline and then she said i can't because she she's like why because she doesn't want to help you and then she was like no she can't help me and that's when iris was like you know you killed her you know because what happened was when Barry when her flash and the rogues 
basically like went in an all out assault on Red Death and basically took her down and had her down for the count. In a last ditch attempt to save her ass, Ryan tried to throw a lightning bolt at the Flash, you know, to kill him or to knock him out or whatever. And then I guess Iris jumped in the way to try to stop, you know, Barry from taking that hit. And then Iris ended up dying instead, which obviously said, cause, cause Ryan kept telling Iris the Flash on, in my timeline, he's crazy. He's a lunatic and like, he's going berserk. Well, yeah, because you, you, you accidentally killed his wife. So it's like, now that you killed Iris, of course he's coming for that ass because of that. Why would anybody stand for that? And then she was just like, you know, you're a, Iris was like, you're a murderer. And she was like, it was an accident. But then she said, she said that, but if I can get you to come with me back to my timeline, then I can, I can stop, you know, I can fix things because she, you know, and then that's what Iris was like. No, she was like, you don't want to fix things. You basically want to use me as bait to draw your flash out of hiding. So you can kill that, you know, you can kill your timelines flash. And she was like, you damn right, bitch. And then she beat up Iris and knocked Iris out. And then that's when she got the other, that's when we got the third line, uh, the third Batman line. And then when, you know, cause then she called her suit, the suit left from where Barry was, the suit started putting itself, you know, remotely on, on Ryan. It came to where, where Ryan was. And when it was putting itself on Ryan, once Ryan had the suit on, she looked at Iris and was like, you want to get nuts, bitch? She was like, let's get nuts. And that was from the original Michael Keaton Batman movie. Ryan now has Iris, brings Iris back to the warehouse. You know, Barry's there. And then Ryan's just like, get on the treadmill and run, bitch. <laughs> you know, otherwise I'm going to kill your woman. And then she's like, no, Barry, he, she needs me alive. She was like, yeah, but I don't need you breathing. And then she shot and then Barry was like, no, and he's like, I'll do whatever you want. And then he got in the treadmill and he started running. So then before that, when the suit had left to go, you know, make its return to Ryan, Barry actually had a conversation with Chillblade. And then he was just like, listen, bro, he was like, you know, you can, it's not too late for you to make a change. He's like, you know, you can still do right by yourself and right by Frost. And then he decided to do that at the last second. He ended up sabotaging the treadmill and the blowback from the treadmill, the energy, the organic speed energy, it shocked Ryan and knocked Ryan out. So then now, you know, that's when the rest of the rogues was like, wait, Chillblade betrayed us. And then everybody went after Chillblade to go beat his ass. So meanwhile, back at Star Labs, because Red Death also did something in the beginning of the episode where she used her her overwhelming power to cause a blackout throughout the city. After she caused the blackout, Chester and the gang ended up calling the reformed rogues so they can help, you know, find Barry. So they tried to use their technology. They eventually found Barry after Chillblain, you know, destroyed the cosmic treadmill and, and they took the metacuffs off of Barry. They found Barry. Allegra used the old Nash Wells, you know, like um, disappearing act. And then they went to where Barry was. They saved Barry. They saved Iris. But right before they ended up being teleported back to Star Labs, they, they showed Chillblade being basically basically knocked out by all the metas and three of them were about to shoot him, stab him or something. And it's perceived that chill Blaine is dead and they killed him right before the rest of team flash got teleported back to star labs. Once again, if there's no body, there's no death. So Chill Blade will probably come back at some point. They probably got him like tied up somewhere. So then they go back to Star Labs. And then Barry was like, why didn't you help save him? And then they was the, the other rogue was just like, we ain't doing that shit. Because there's like the Red Death was about to wake up and that bitch would have killed everybody. So then, you know, so then he was just like, no, that's not what we do. And then, well, I was about to call her Caitlin. Dion, Sion, is it Dion? I see, I, I forgot the girl name already. <laughs> I forgot the girl name. Uh, the new Caitlin, she came out and then she was like, every life is sacred and you know she tried to put give her by the guilt trip and then, and then after that then it cuts back to ryan and then she's with the rest of the rogues and they were like so what do we do now and then she was like oh my treadmill's destroyed the flash won't let me go home and i'm like well that's not true nobody has a problem with you going home you just can't take iris with you <laughs> like that's the whole thing like iris ain't going with you but she was just like it doesn't matter because if i can't go home i'll just make this world my prison and i'm gonna release the death you know like all over you know central city Wahaha. that's how the episode ended <laughs> thank you for tuning in i need to say this though this is one thing like i like the episode it's a good episode love ryan javicia leslie ryan wilder love her performance as red death like the fact that she going crazy i'm in love with all this and for the love of god i wish they bring batwoman back here's my whole question though if Red Death is here, and now Barry knows it's Ryan Wilder from a different timeline, if Iris knows it's Ryan Wilder from a different timeline, if the entire Team Flash knows this is Ryan Wilder from a different timeline, why is nobody actually trying to find the actual Ryan Wilder? Like, where is she just not going to show up <laughs> until the last minute? Because clearly, Red Death uh, kidnapped, you know, Ryan Wilder, like this version's Ryan Wilder. And if we're not actually asking the question where the original Ryan Wilder is, I pray that this ends up turning into us getting a cameo 
where Luke Fox, Sophie Moore, and Mary Hamilton show up in Central City, and they're just like, look, honestly, y'all got this Red Death shit going on, but um, is nobody trying to find Ryan? Like, was really good. And then they kick in the door and wave the 4-4. Then we get a bat team up with Team Flash, and I'm definitely here for that. So share your questions, comments, and or concerns down below. What do you think about this episode of um, The Flash? I was about to say Batwoman. What do you think about this particular episode of The Flash? Do you miss Ryan Wilder? Do you miss Batwoman? How do you think it's all going to play out? Because this was a part one. See, because this was a part one, it basically means that the whole Red Death thing isn't going to take up the entire season. And the actual negative Speed Force avatar will make his or her appearance at some point during the episode because they keep bringing up, you know, like the negative Speed Force avatar, the avatar, the avatar, the avatar. The avatar is actually going to pop up, but it's not going to be Ryan Wilder. She's just the red herring that masks the true identity of the actual, you know, like Speed Force avatar. So... I would guess that, I mean, I don't know how many episodes we're getting in The Flash, but I would guess that if this is a part one, part two will probably end the Ryan Wilder version of the story, and then we'll go into something else because we're supposed to get other returning characters from other canceled, you know, Arrowverse properties. So we got, like, everybody's not here to fight the Red Death, so we'll see where all these other characters come in and where things go from here, and I'm definitely looking forward to it. So check me out on Twitter and or Instagram. Like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not already. Hit the notification bell so you'll get notified when my other videos pop up because I'm still working on this Street Fighter stuff because Street Fighter 6 is coming y'all <laughs> Street Fighter 6 is coming and I'm definitely here for that I mean I'm going on vacation at the end of this month I will most likely do a couple of reviews while I'm on vacation but Superman and Lois actually starts the week before my vacation and Shazam Fury of the God starts before my vacation so I'm gonna try to review both of those before I leave and then we'll see what happens and you know we'll, we'll get all the superhero goodness because I actually do want to see some Shazam Fury of the Gods because that's my ish so thank you for tuning in everybody as always until next time as we unmask the redness of death take care.